Hello and welcome to my video. So, sa araw na ito ay meron tayong real life situation na kung saan ay magagamit natin yung topic na adding two forces in three dimension. So, the problem states solve for the resultant force in the given picture. So, as we can see in here, meron tayong dalawang force which equals to 200 newton and 180 newton. So, both of these forces are connected to point A. So, and take note that both of these values are just and assumed values since hindi ko naman talaga alam kung ano ang totoong value ng dalawang forces na ito. So, to solve for the resultant force, we must first take a look of this picture in 3D perspective. So, as we can see in here, we have the 3D version of our picture earlier. So, just like in the picture, we also have the F1 which is equal to 200 Newton and we also have the F2 which is equal to 118 Newton. So, but unlike in the picture in earlier, now we have the value of F1 of its angle in the Z axis which is the alpha which is equal to 62.88 degrees. And we also have the value of F2 in the Z axis which is the beta which is equal to 60.5 degrees. And also, we also now have the value of FH in the F1 in the x-axis which is equal to 50.19 degrees. And we also have the value of FH of the F2 in the x-axis which is equal to 45 degrees. So, in solving for the resultant force of these two forces, we must first find the components of these two forces. So, the first component that we are going to find is the components of the F1. So, in determining the components of F1, we must first separate F1 to the figure earlier. So, as we can see in here, we now have the separated version of F1 from the figure earlier. So, as we can see in the picture, we now have the Fz, Fx, and Fy, which are the components of F1. So, first component that we are going to determine is the Fz. So, Fz is equal to negative 200 newton times cosine 62.88 degrees. Now, as you can see in here, it is negative because the direction of F1 is pointing downwards. So, therefore, it counteracts the direction of Fz which is upward. So, therefore, it is negative. So, solving this equation, we will get the value of Fz which is equal to negative 91.17 Newton. So, next component that we are going to determine if the, is the Fx and Fy. But as we can see in the figure, we cannot use the value of alpha, which is 62.88 degrees, in determining the fx and fy. So therefore, we will use the fh to determine its values. So, fh is equal to 200 newton times sine 62.88 degrees. Solving this will get us 178.01 newton. So now, since we have the value of fh, we cannot determine the value of fx and fy. So, Fy is equal to negative 178.01 Newton times sine 50.19 degrees. So, as you can see in here, it is also negative because the direction also of F1 opposes the direction of the Y axis. So, therefore, it shall be negative. So, solving this will get us the value of Fy which is negative 136.74 Newton. So, last component that we are going to determine is the Fx. So, Fx is equal to 178.01 Newton times cosine 50.19 degrees, which is equals to 113.97 Newton. So, now we have the value of the components of F1. So, next, comp next components that we are going to determine is the components of F2. So, just like on the F1, we will also separate F2 from the figure earlier. So, as we can see in the picture, we also now have the figure of F2 which is separated from the figure earlier. So now we have Fz, Fx, and Fy which is which are also its components and also we have now the Fh. So first component that we are going we are going to determine is the Fz. So Fz is equal to negative 180 newton times cosine 60.5 degrees. So as you can see also in here we also use negative because the direction of F2 also points downward so therefore it should be negative. So, Fz is equals to negative 88.64 Newton. So, next component that we are going to determine is the Fx and Fy. But just like on the F1, we cannot use the value 
of the degree of f1 in this uh, axis because it cannot give us the value of fx and fy so we are going to find the value of fh so just like in the f1 we're going to determine of fh which is equals to 118 newton times sine 60.5 degrees which equals to 156.66 newton so now we have the value of fh in the f2 we can now solve the value of fx and fy in the f2 so now fy is equals to 100 56.66 newton times sine 45 degrees which equals to 110.78 newton and we can also determine the fx which is equals to 156.66 newton times cosine 45 degrees which also have the same value of fy which is 110.78 newton so now we have the value of the components of f1 and f2 we can also solve the value of the f R, which is the resultant force so to solve for the resultant force we must first arrange the components that we get earlier so in f1 we have 113.97 newton in x-axis we also have negative 136.74 newton in y-axis and lastly we have negative 91.70 newton in z-axis in f2 we will have 110.78 newton in x axis we also have 110.78 newton in y axis and lastly we have negative 88.64 newton in z axis so to solve for the resultant force we must first get its components so to get its components we will use this equation so fr which is resultant force is equals to the summation of fx plus the summation of fy plus the summation of fz substituting these components in this equation we will have this equation so fr is equals to 113.97 newton plus 110.78 newton in x-axis we also have negative 136.74 newton plus 110.78 newton in y-axis and lastly we have negative 91.70 newton minus 88.64 newton in z axis so solving this we will get the components of the resultant force so here we have the components of the resultant force which is 224.75 newton in x axis it also have negative 25.96 newton in y axis and lastly it have negative 179.81 newton in z axis so to solve for the value of the resultant force we will be using this equation so fr is equals to the square root of the summation of fx squared plus the summation of fy squared plus the summation of fg squared so substituting these values which are this we will get this so fr is equals to the square root of 224.75 squared plus negative negative 25.9 six squared plus negative 79.81 squared newton so solving this we will get the final value of the resultant force which is 281 newton so to view this in the 3d perspective we will it would look like this so this is the 3d version of the value earlier so this is the resultant force this is and these are its components so we have fy which is negative and we have fx and we also have fz and that's that is all for today and thank you for watching my video